Today's Bible reading for August 20. As usual, we're reading from the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Psalms, and the Proverbs. We want to complete the whole Bible in one year. So the Old Testament reading is from the book of Esther, chapter 8 to chapter 10. On that same day, King Saxis gave the property of Haman, the enemy of the Jews, to Queen Esther. Then Mordecai was brought before the king, for Esther had told the king how they were related. The king took off his signet ring, which he had taken back from Haman, and gave it to Mordecai. And Esther appointed Mordecai to be in charge of Haman's property. Then Esther went again before the king, falling down at his feet and begging him with tears to stop the evil plot devised by Haman the Agagite against the Jews. Again the king held out the golden scepter to Esther, so she rose and stood before him. Esther said, If it please the king, and if I have found favor with him, and if he thinks it is right, and if I am pleasing to him, let there be a decree that reverses the order of Haman, son of Hamedatha the Agagite, who ordered that Jews throughout all the king's provinces should be destroyed. For how can I endure to see my people and my family slaughtered and destroyed? Then King Xerxes said to Queen Esther and Mordecai the Jew, I have given Esther the property of Haman, and he has been impaled on a pole because he tried to destroy the Jews. Now go ahead and send a message to the Jews in the king's name, telling them whatever you want, and seal it with the king's signet ring. But remember that whatever has already been written in the king's name and sealed with his signet ring can never be revoked. So, on June 25th, the king's secretaries were summoned, and a decree was written exactly as Mordecai dictated. It was sent to the Jews and to the highest officers, the governors, and the nobles of all the 127 provinces stretching from India to Ethiopia. The decree was written in the scripts and languages of all the peoples of the empire, including that of the Jews. The decree was written in the name of King Xerxes and sealed with the king's signet ring. Mordecai sent the dispatches by swift messengers who rode fast horses, especially bred for the king's service. The king's decree gave the Jews in every city authority to unite to defend their lives. They were allowed to kill, slaughter, and and I held it anyone of any nationality or province who might attack them or their children and wives and to take the property of their enemies. The day chosen for this event throughout the provinces of King Xerxes was March 7 of the next year. A copy of this decree was to be issued as law in every province and proclaimed to all peoples so that the Jews would be ready to take revenge on their enemies on the appointed day. So, urged on by the king's command, the messengers rode out swiftly on fast horses bred for the king's service. The same decree was also proclaimed in the fortress of Susa. Then Mordecai left the king's presence wearing the royal robe of blue and white the great crown of gold and an outer cloak of fine linen and purple, and the people of Susa celebrated the new decree. The Jews were filled with joy and gladness and were honored everywhere. In every province and city, wherever the king's decree arrived, the Jews rejoiced and had a great celebration and declared a public festival and holiday, and many of the people of the land became Jews themselves themselves, for they feared what the Jews might do to them. So on March 7th, the, de the two decrees of the king were put into effect. On that day, the enemies of the Jews 
had hoped to overpower them, but quite the opposite happened. It was the Jews who overpowered their enemies. The Jews gathered in their cities throughout all the king's provinces to attack anyone who tried to harm them. But no one could make a stand against them, for everyone was afraid of them. And all the nobles of the provinces, the highest officers, the governors, and the royal officials helped the Jews for fear of Mordecai. For Mordecai had been promoted in the king's palace, and his fame spread throughout all the provinces as he became more and more powerful. So the Jews went ahead on the appointed day and struck down their enemies with the sword. They killed and annihilated their enemies and did as they pleased with those who hated them. In the fortress of Susa itself, the Jews killed 500 men. They also killed Pashadatha, Pashandatha, Dalphon, Aspata, Purata, Adalia, Aridata, Pamasta, Arisai, Aridai, and Vaizatha, the ten sons of Haman, son of Hamidatha, the enemy of the Jews. But they did not take any plunder. That very day, when the king was informed of the number of people killed in the fortress of Susa, he called for Queen Esther. He said, the Jews have killed 500 men in the fortress of Susa alone, as well as Ham Haman's ten sons. If they have done that here, what has happened in the rest of the provinces? But now, what more do you want? It will be granted to you. Tell me, and I will do it. Esther responded, If it please the king, give the Jews in Susa permission to do again tomorrow, as they have done today, and let the bodies of Haman's ten sons be impelled on a pole. So the king agreed, and the decree was announced in Susa, and they impelled the bodies of Haman's ten sons. Then the Jews at Susa gathered together on March 8th and killed 300 more men, and again they took no plunder. Meanwhile, the other Jews throughout the king's provinces had gathered together to defend their lives. They gained relief from all their enemies, killing 75,000 of those who hated them, but they did not take any plunder. This was done throughout the provinces on March 7th, and on March 8th they rested, celebrating their victory with a day of feasting and gladness. The Jews in, at Susa killed their enemies on March 7th and again on March 8th, then rested on March 9th, making that their day of feasting and gladness. So to this day, rural Jews living in remote villages celebrate an annual festival and holiday on the appointed day in late winter, when they rejoice and send gifts of food to each other. Mordecai recorded these events and sent letters to the Jews near and far throughout all the provinces of King Xerxes, calling on them to celebrate an annual festival on these two days. He told them to celebrate these days with feasting and gladness, and by giving gifts of food to each other and presents to the poor. This would commemorate a time when the Jews gained relief from their enemies, when their sorrow was turned into gladness and their mourning into joy. So the Jews accepted Mordecai's proposal and adopted this annual custom. Haman, son of Hamidatha, the Agagite, the enemy of the Jews, had plotted to crush and destroy them on the date determined by casting lots. The lots were called Puri. But when Esther came before the king, he issued a decree causing Haman's evil plot to backfire and Haman and his sons were impaled on a sharpened pole. That is why this celebration is called Purim because it is the ancient word for casting lots. So, Mordecai, so because of Mordecai's letter and because of what they had experienced, the Jews throughout the realm agreed 
to inaugurate this tradition and to pass it on to their descendants and to all who became Jews. They declared they, were ne they would never fail to celebrate these two prescribed days at the appointed time each year. These days would be remembered and kept from generation to generation and celebrated by every family throughout the provinces and cities of the empire. This festival of Purim would never cease to be celebrated among the Jews, nor would the memory of what happened ever die out among their descendants. Then Queen Esther, the daughter of Abihail, along with Mordecai the Jew, wrote another letter putting the queen's full authority behind Mordecai's letter to establish the festival of Purim. Letters wishing peace and security were sent to the Jews throughout the 127 provinces of the Empire of Xerxes. These letters established the festival of Purim, an annual celebration of these days at the appointed time, decreed by both Mordecai the Jew and Queen Esther. The people decided to observe this festival just as they had decided for themselves and their descendants to establish the times of fasting and mourning. So, the command of Esther confirmed the practices of Purim and it was all written down in the records. King Sassis imposed a tribute throughout his empire, even to the distant coastlands. His great achievements and the full account of the greatness of Mordecai, whom the king had promoted, are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Media and Persia. Mordecai, the Jew, became the prime minister with authority next to that of King Xerxes himself. He was very great among the Jews who held him in high esteem because he continued to work for the good of his people and to speak up for the welfare of all of all their descendants. So that's the end of the reading of the Old Testament. I think um, this is still celebrated even up to now in 2024. Yeah, in this century, I think they are still celebrating that day. <laughs> so, um, the New Testament reading is from first letter of Paul to the Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 27 to chapter 13 verse 13 all of you together are Christ's body and each of you is a part of it here are some of the parts God has appointed for the church first are apostles second are prophets third are teachers third are teachers then those who do miracles those who have the gift of healing those who can help others, those who have the gift of leadership, those who speak in unknown tongues. Are we all apostles? Are we all prophets? Are we all teachers? Do we all have the power to do miracles? Do we all have the gift of healing? Do we all have the ability to speak in unknown languages? Do we all have the ability to interpret unknown languages? Of course not. So you should earnestly desire the most helpful gifts. But now, let me show you a way of life that is best of all. If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. 
Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice. It rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith. It is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless, but love will last forever. Now, our knowledge is partial and incomplete, and even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. But when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete. But then I will know everything completely, just as God now knows me completely. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. So that was the New Testament reading. Now from the Psalms, Psalm 37 verse 1 to 11. A Psalm of David. Don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they soon fade away. Like spring flowers, they soon wither. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. He will make your innocence radiate like the dawn and the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Stop being angry. Turn from your rage. Do not lose your temper. It only leads to harm. For the wicked will be destroyed. But those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. Soon the wicked will disappear. Though you look for them, they will be gone. The lowly will possess the land and will live in peace and prosperity. So that was the reading from the Psalms. And now from the Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 23 to 24. Watch your tongue and keep your mouth shut and you will stay out of trouble. Mockers are proud and haughty. They act with boundless arrogance. So that's the end of the reading for today. May, sorry, August 20. May the Lord God Almighty bless the reading and hearing of his word. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.